How to install the LAMP stack on Pop! OS Linux. Let's get started. Okay, so you've heard of the LAMP stack. The L is for Linux. The A is always for Apache. The M is for MySQL or Maria Database. And the P is usually PHP, but it could also be Perl or Python. And it's the LAMP stack. Now there's this implementation here XAMPP, JAMP or X, I don't know how you pronounce that. We can see what it here what it is. It's the it's a PHP development environment. It's still a LAMP stack essentially, and it gives you these these uh, you know three or four major components: the Apache, the Maria server, uh, the PHP you know runtime, the Perl runtime, and the Python runtime. Sometimes that's also part of the P. So. Yeah, so in the LAMP stack you can either do it piecemeal by installing Apache by itself, Maria database or MySQL server by by itself, and the the PHP, Perl, Python runtime interpreters by themselves and try to get everything to work together. Here, it's already bundled. It's an environment, it's a stack, whatever, okay? So now for uh for Mac and Windows they have MAMP and for Windows it's WAMP. For Linux, it's LAMP or this XA JAMP, X A M P P uh, development environment stack stack package. Okay, so we're gonna put it on pop. So pretty straightforward. We're on the uh, start page here. I know it says Apache dot friends Apache friends dot org. It's a little kind of throws you off. You expect for the X A M P P to be in the in the address somewhere, but it's not. But I assure you, it's the right. This is this is correct. So navigate here. And uh, for Linux, you know, uh, we've got Windows and, and Mac. We want to do the Linux uh, download. So we click on that, and it prompts me if I want to save it. I go yeah. Now I already have it saved, but we're gonna do it again just for the uh, purposes of the video. As you can see here, it's a 153 megabyte download, and we have about a minute left, and we're about uh, not quite halfway through yet. So bear with me; it'll be done soon. I have a I have high speed internet, so it shouldn't take too long. Almost done. 33 more seconds to go. And then from here on out, it's pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward as far as what we have to do with the uh, the installer once once it's done downloading. It's a little bit of a different uh, process. They have a .run file as opposed to a, a .shell script or a tar file. A little different. Okay, it's it's been uh, been saved, downloaded, and saved. So we're done with the uh, we're done with the browser. I'll go to the terminal, and it does save it in the in this in the download folder as you would expect. And we'll try to we'll look for it here. This is the one I just did now, and this is the one I had before. This is the installer file. Okay, now let's clear this. Now we're going to have to do a, we're going to have to change the uh, the permissions on this file. So we'll do uh, you know a pseudo session chmod. We're going to change the permissions, and we're going to you can whatever you want. Set whatever, uh, however which way you want to do your your symbolic numerical permissions. I just do 777 that way everything's covered, you know. And we'll and we'll we'll do it and we'll perform that operation on the installer. Okay, I'm sorry. I I need to have the run extension here. Okay, now it's been done. Okay, so re regardless of whether you're the user, the group, the the user owner, the group owner or somebody else you could run this installer program now. So I don't think we I 
Probably don't need to do pseudo, but just to cover that base, we'll do a pseudo. I don't think we need to do that since every permissions are all RWX for everybody. So then we'll so then we, so we essentially we made it we made it executable with the chmod. Now we're going to execute it as the root as the pseudo user. And then it launches the wizard. So the program's not installed yet, but it, it gives you the, uh, the, the, the install wizard to run through all the different screens. Now I did select this. Before I did it, this was, this was not checked. I just checked it right now. Pretty sure it's something I'd want to do. I don't know why it was unchecked this time. So we'll next on that. You see the path it's going to be installed to. Opt lamp. And it takes a while to install. So maybe I can pause it here and then come back when it's. Of course, I, I did it before and it was slow. Maybe if you do it the second time, it's a little bit faster. Like it's going pretty fast here. Maybe I should just pause it and then uh, come back when it's done. I don't want everybody to wait and watch the uh, progress meter here. But it's going pretty pretty quick. Faster than it did the first time. Maybe, maybe because I've already got it installed and it's faster the second time around. Let me pause it and I'll, I'll come back when it's done. Okay. Took a while. Good thing I paused it. But yeah, finished. So we're going to finish now, and then I'll launch it, and then I'll kill that, and I'll show how you can do it from the terminal, because this is only going to launch it for you the first time after you finish the, uh, the setup wizard. So we'll launch it. Okay. Now we're, I'm, I'm going to kill this, and then I'm going to show you how to launch it from the terminal going, you know, uh, you know whenever you use it from day to day. Because it launched it here for you at the end of the ins of the installation process, but since you're not going to run the installer all the time, you're going to always want to install uh, run it every, from day to day. And there's no way to run it from the, the the GUI application. You can't run the GUI from the application folder, so you you have to always uh, run it with a, a couple of commands from the terminal. So I'll show that. So we'll kill that, and then we'll we'll navigate around and we'll go. Into the files that we, into the folders that we have to go to to uh, to to start it. Okay. Now, one more thing I want to check was um, the permission or the or the ownership on that on that uh, install file on that run file. Well, it's coming up as Paul. I do. I don't know. I I I think it was coming in. The ownership was root. I'm not sure. I'll have to check that later. But for now, it's been installed, so we'll just we'll clear everything up. Now, to run it, like I said, you can't put it into the application folder. You have to always start it from the terminal. Now, this first this first command will just give you Okay, I'm going to path in here. And there's there's uh this lamp um I'm not sure if it's a uh, what kind of a file it is exactly. It's a sh script or some kind of executable, and then we'll do start on that. And all it, all this one does is tell you that the Apache and the MySQL server are running. So that's that's. I mean, it, it's helpful for troubleshooting, but it doesn't really. You can't really do anything here. All you can do is verify that. Now to actually launch the application. We need to do something else. Now what we're going to do to get to the GUI, we're going to do a CD into that into that uh, optional directory in the lamp subdirectory. So now we're, we're now we're here. Opt lamp, okay. And then there's a man. There's there's another. Uh, Another dot run file in here. 
right here and it's already executable so all you have to do is just go into a pseudo session now I tried to do the uh, the tab autocomplete and it really didn't work so you have to just type the whole the whole name in manually x64.run I guess it doesn't autocomplete it because it's not a shell script or a compiled executable or whatever so then you enter on that and there it is okay so you know we installed it we downloaded the uh, the run file we 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 changed some permissions we ran it and installed it we ran a command that verified that the the Apache and the Maria serve the, the MySQL servers are active and loaded and then how to actually launch it since you can't la launch it from the from the application folder here so you have to launch it like this okay so at this point I would just fire up an editor create uh, you know a PHP source code files and and run it and run it and then open your browser and run it in the browser and there, and it should uh, should render that way okay thank you